Good afternoon. Central Queenslanders are being urged to brush up on their engineering skills to take advantage of the region's growing aluminium and magnesium industries. Local metals employers today met with the Parliamentary Secretary for Employment and Training to discuss how better to improve productivity and profitability. And the loving couple stay true to themselves and the sport that brought them together. We'll have all those details and more coming up on Win News tonight at 6 o'clock. On a current affair, new hope for childless couples. I could not believe it. Now their chances soar. The perfect little girl. Thanks to an Aussie breakthrough. This is a world first. Unbelievable. Absolute miracle. Tonight on Wing, following judging Amy, an excruciating game of elimination, boot camp, followed by Third Watch and Roswell. <laughs> Tonight, budget delivered small business and the elderly to benefit the most. Calls for a skilled training school for meat workers. And more tributes for your Poon State of Origin hero. Win News with Alana Lindsay and Bruce Diamond. Good evening. Good evening. Treasurer Peter Costello's sixth federal budget has received a lukewarm reaction from central Queensland lobby groups. There were few surprises, with seniors the big winners and increased funding for quarantine services. But local business and health groups say this year's budget simply doesn't go far enough. It was tipped to be an election war chest, but as Treasurer Peter Costello handed down his sixth federal budget last night, there were very few surprises to increase the seating capacity. Coming up next, trench warfare by the RSL over women soldiers. And Central Queensland chases a world IT market. Hello, Bruce Page. Coming up in National 9 News, who gets what from the budget, including reaction from older Aussies. A damning report into international cricket corruption, another World Sports Award for Cathy Freeman, and the French Spiderman at it again. The details soon. Welcome back to Win News. Thanks for joining us tonight. In the thick of simulated warfare in central Queensland, the president of the Capricornia sub-branch of the RSL has emerged from the trenches with news it's illogical for women to have a combat role. The call comes after weeks of debate as to whether women should serve on the front line with their male counterparts. Should or shouldn't Australia allow women onto the front line? That's the hot topic circling military and political groups. Well done. Now to the share watch and the National Australia Bank was up 23 today. Flight Centre was up 40 to 25.40. Woolworths fell 18 to 9.79 and the All Lords was down 8 at the end of trade. Here's the sport and Gary Foley. Gary, a well-deserved reward. Bruce, that's coming up next. Plus Paul Taylor profiles one of Central Queensland's long league love affairs. Good evening everyone, welcome back to our sport. Yapoon State of Origin hero John Doyle has been made an honorary team member of the Rockhampton Rustlers. Rockhampton League President Maury Webb used a fleeting visit to Townsville to make the presentation. The local league president thought he'd use a stopover in Townsville to best advantage and organised for State of Origin hooker John Doyle to meet him at the end. <laughs> Paul Taylor, Win News. Good to see true love still abounds. That's it in sport and now it's back to Bruce and Alana. Thanks, Gary. Stay with us. The weather's next. And centenary celebrations continue. And after milder weather overnight, the day warmed up beautifully with fine conditions right throughout most of central Queensland. Temperature-wise, the lowest in the state was 3 degrees and recorded at Charleville and Mitchell. Locally, Billa Wheeler was 8 to 29. Yapoon, 15 to 23 degrees. Rockhampton, Emerald and Springshaw all reaching 26 this afternoon. Currently in Rocky, it's 20 degrees. Winds are light and variable and the pressure 1,014. Not much activity again tonight on the Queensland Sat Pick. Some low level cloud there across the southeast quarter of the state and a few showers along the south coast of Harvey Bay. 
On to the continental picture. Uh, nothing of significance at all. That high-level jet stream cloud is now well east of Australia. Onto the radar and a few showers off the coast, as well as isolated showers in the Monto district. They need a bit of rain down there. The chart is showing mostly fine weather for an indefinite period. The surface pattern will reorganise with the main high moving north and weakening. Locally tomorrow for Capricornia, isolated showers along the coast but fine inland and mostly light winds. For the central highlands and the coal fields, fine and cool with light to moderate south to southeasterly winds forecast for Friday and Saturday, fine. A quick look at the maritime obs, Heron Island south southeast, Yapoon east southeast at nine knots. The forecast for Capricornia Water, St Lawrence to Burnett Heads, southeast to southerly winds and seas 1.4 metres offshore. Isolated showers are expected. The outlook for Friday and Saturday much the same. The tide times, sunrise and sunset. It just keeps getting better, Alana. Certainly does. Thanks, Bruce. Students at Rockhampton's Lake Creek School have turned back the clock for their Education Week celebrations. From elastics, knuckles and pick-up sticks to hopscotch and marbles, it was schoolyard games of old to tie in with Centenary of Federation. Oh, cool. First you get a marble and then you have to knock out the one in the middle. And it wasn't hard to cotton on with many a marble king and queen. I've been skipping and I've been playing some, some games. But there's more in store this week. Tomorrow's students will have a special costume parade of both famous and not to mention infamous Australians. Brings back some memories. Certainly does. Good night and see you tomorrow. Good night. This has been a Win News presentation from Australia's largest regional television network. With Bruce Page and Heather Ford, this is National Nine News. Two people dead in a light plane crash in Brisbane. Coalition accused of vote buying in its budget handout for pensioners. Kathy Freeman named the best in the world. Good evening. Good evening. Our budget coverage shortly. First, a light plane has crashed at Archerfield Airport, killing two people. Southside emergency crews rushed to the field just before 5.30. The aircraft, a twin-engine Comanche, was coming into land after a training flight. The wreckage is lying at the northwestern end of the airport. Both the dead were on board the plane. The federal government's been going all out to sell its election budget. The Prime Minister denies the $2.3 billion worth of benefits for older Australians is a bribe to buy their votes. Treasurer Peter Costello was late for his first TV interview of the day. They're marking him up, they're putting his earpiece in. <laughs> Good morning, Treasurer. Can you hear me? Hello, yes. <laughs> Hi. Okay, you're on air. I just want oh, you to I? know oh, that. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, really? Am I on air? <laughs> yeah. The Prime Minister did his first interview before leaving the. Andrew Truen, National 9 News. The long-awaited report on corruption in cricket has been released and it contains some amazing claims. The 75-page document links the game with serious crimes like kidnap and murder, but it mentions no names. It reads in part like an international bestseller. Murder, threats, collusion and kidnapping, all this in the gentleman's game. I don't think there are any uh, major surprises for the ACB. There are no players implicated, no specific allegations, but corruption is worse than first thought. Former Scotland Yardhead Sir Paul Condon's most startling claim, a Pakistani bookmaker involved in match-fixing, allegedly abducted and killed in South Africa. Not saying that that's been proved, but uh, so put it into that perspective, even in that perspective, obviously it's a matter of great concern. The ACB was criticised for covering up payments made to Mark Waugh and Shane Warne by an Indian bookmaker in 1994. I don't think there's anything new there. That's all been said before. Uh, the ACB's faced up to that. 24 recommendations have been made for the ICC to consider next month, including an education program and limiting mobile phone access to contracted players during matches. While the most blatant forms of match-fixing have stopped, corruption remains part of the game, with some players still on bookmaker payrolls. Stamping it out, says Sir Paul, is cricket's biggest challenge. The full report can be found at www.icc.cricket.org. Carl Stefanovic, National 9 News. 
At the Olympics last September, Australia was sure Cathy Freeman was the greatest. Now it's official, she's the best in the world. Cathy's been named International Sportswoman of the Year, beating four other greats, including Marion Jones and Australian golfer Kari Webb. It's billed as the Sporting Oscars, a night with a Hollywood touch. In Monaco, Damien Ryan, National 9 News. In the news ahead, Impulse staff refused to go quietly. And the damage to a grounded luxury cruiser. You're with National 9 News. Sacked Impulse airline workers returned to their old workplace this morning in a bid to win public support to overturn their dismissal. Some former employees went to Brisbane's domestic terminal, armed with placards and a petition calling on Qantas to restore 200 jobs lost in its takeover. Sort of veer into the left, uh, it's just missed the top of these two transporters here and just, just made it over the fence. Looks like it come down nose first and made a bit of a mess in the paddock. Sport now with Wally Lewis. Uh, the unthinkable's happened at the Bullets. It's the end of an era, Bruce. Leroy Loggins is ready to quit basketball after being cut by the club. That's coming up. And Shogun Lodge looks set to shake off all rivals in the Doombin Cup. Good evening. Leroy Loggins looks set to retire from basketball after being sacked by the Brisbane Bullets today. A legend at the club for almost 20 years, the 43-year-old has been cut for a new youth policy. Shocked by his unexpected dumping after 19 seasons with the Bullets, Loggins chose the dark confines of a city nightclub he part owns to draw the curtain on a magnificent sporting career. Bruce Slack, National 9 News. And tomorrow we may even get to find the future of the Cowboys. It's been a while coming, hasn't it? Thanks, Will. Uh, dividends in Oslotto, uh, no big winners. The prize uh, jackpots to $4 million. Division 2 pays over 33500 John's next with the weather. Then an encore from the French Spider-Man. Good evening. We had a very bright start to the day. Plenty of sunshine and clear skies. By this afternoon, there was no shortage of cloud around the southeast. There were some scattered, isolated showers about, but uh, nothing too much over a millimetre was reported. There's still a chance of maybe the odd brief shower this evening, but from tomorrow and right into the weekend, the days will be fine and clear with cool mornings. Now, it was another very cool morning today in parts of the southeast. The Gold Coast 15 to 22, Logan 12 to 22, Ipswich 8 again this morning, got up to 22 by lunchtime. Brisbane 14 to 23 degrees. Redcliffe had a range of 15 to 20. 21, Caboolture 11 to 22 and 16 to 21 on the Sunshine Coast. At the moment in Brisbane it's 17 degrees, barometer 1,016 and rising and the humidity is 74%. Who are unimpressed with this mischievous monsieur. No ropes, no nets. No brains, brother. <laughs> no fear. <laughs> None at all. That's how it is this Wednesday. Good night. See you Good night. Hi, thanks for tuning in. A little later, the budget that will decide the fate of John Howard and Peter Costello. We talk to the Treasurer. And we take you on a tour of a brand new high school.